Hey guys, Ray here, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing social listening, and the tool we're going to be discussing specifically is Hootsuite, and I'm sure many of you have heard of Hootsuite, and the methods that we are going to be discussing today is 100% free, and that's amazing because free tools are awesome. So let's dive into the video and how you can leverage social listening for your digital marketing strategy, being a thought leader in the space, or just for seeing pretty much what's happening on Twitter specifically. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are on Hootsuite.com. And for those of you who have not heard of Hootsuite before, it's a pretty common tool. It's mainly used to schedule out a bunch of your content on a ton of different social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, I think even Instagram and a couple others. But it's a really good tool for, for many things. Uh, but, but the main thing we're going to be discussing today is how to use Hootsuite for social listening exactly. So if you haven't been to Hootsuite before, make sure you go to Hootsuite.com. And then when you get to Hootsuite.com, create yourself an account. The account is entirely free, and the methods we are going to be discussing today is entirely free. So head to Hootsuite.com, create yourself an account, and then you'll be able to head to your dashboard. So um, your dashboard, when you first start, is going to be pretty empty. And essentially what each one of these columns here are is they are streams and streams are defined by how you set up the rules within your stream um, and these are essentially going to be your listening channels so i, I have different channels set up for um, different things and, and let, let me dive into the what here specifically before we get into the how um, but what this column here is, we're looking at very specific hashtags. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at um, hashtags PPC chat or Facebook ads chat. And those are two pretty big um, hashtags out there in, in the Twitter sphere. So make sure if you're a digital marketer to head over there and you may see me out there tweeting a little bit. And that'd be cool if you were out there too. Anyways, um, you can follow certain hashtags, certain keywords, certain whatever. Um, and it just makes a stream of things. So right, right now it's July 7th. So um, it's, it's the holidays. Not a lot of people are posting on these chats. These, these hashtags specifically are typically during the, the business hours for the most part. Um, so it's been pretty quiet for the past couple of days. So in a busy-ish kind of day, you can see, you know, hundreds of tweets happening within a couple of days period. So um, what's really cool is you're able to see how people are searching specific things. So one person has mentioned, hey, how do you charge a new client? Um, some ad copy type of things here, specific things with clients working today. So um, just imagine your specific niche, your brand, your, your competitors, specific hashtags that are relevant to your business and being able to get back to people in a pretty quick time frame. So um, in a previous life, I worked for a garage door company and was literally monitoring words like broken spring or new garage door and sold a couple of garage doors to people who tweeted and said, oh crap, my garage door spring broke or, or something along those lines. And by doing something like that, you can hit people on Twitter in a pretty cool way um, without being too spammy, right? That, that's that's the one of the things that you don't want to do. Um, but a, lo a lot of the different things here that I have created, so I have one for um, specific hashtags. I have ones around um, like quality score specifically. I was testing around with, um, this is one metric in Google Ads specifically for those of you um, who work in uh, digital marketing. So I have one on quality score. I have a list here. Um, of different um, marketing folks or channels or blogs or things like that that I follow. It's a cool way to consume content. And then I have one for people who work for the company that I work for as well. So I have a feed for that. But the way that you would create a stream, so let's say I want to do one for ad relevance on Facebook um, or competitors on Facebook. So let, let's do one for both of those. And Plugging my previous videos, if you guys haven't seen my previous video, I'll put a link down below, but check out um, how to spy on your competitors, but we can kind of create a stream right now on how to do that. So what we can do is if you go to the add stream section on the top of your dashboard, what's going to happen, it's going to ask, okay, what do you want the stream to be? And here's all the different channels that are um, 
supported by default natively inside of Hootsuite. So we're gonna, just going to start with Twitter here. This video is just for Twitter. Um, you can choose like if you want to look at your retweets, likes, but we're going to be looking at a search specifically. And the search we are going to be looking for is ad relevance. And we'll go over these search operators later. So search operators are going to be a way to make us search these type of things a lot more efficiently. And I'll show you the power of it here in a second. So we're gonna look for ad relevance or we're going to look for um, Facebook competitor. So we're going to look for the word ad relevance sequentially. So it has to say ad, it has to say relevance. And then we're going to look for Facebook competitor. Um, it can be either one of those and we're going to see what we get. All right, so I created a stream here, and you guys can see nine hours ago, Extra Expand tweeted something about Facebook ad relevance score updates, what marketers need to know. Great, maybe I want to check out their blog, I want to check out their article. Um, might be some more additional information here from Social Media Examiner, another reputable source. Um, so there's a couple ways you can go about this. Typically, I like to think of it as like knowledge dump. So if I want to like just download a bunch of information right away about a new category, or if I want to see what people are talking about on specific trends, I want to see as many links as possible. So one of the really cool things here with this trend here, um, and let's, let's say I want to name this here. We'll call this ad relevance plus competitor plus FB competitor. You can name your streams. If you go to the more options column here, you can go to preferences and you can edit it, edit this exactly here. So let's say I want to see links only. There's a way that you can do um, filter. So you can filter all of your results by something and we can say filter for links. So now it's going to give me stuff that only has links inside the post. So if I'm in download and data dump mode and I want to see like everything that's out there on the topic, I can go to links only and it's just going to give me like everything that it has with links. So two days ago, two days ago, great. So some of your topics, if it's a data dump, it'll be links, great. On the flip side, you can also negative that out. You can throw a negative um, or a minus sign here. And what's gonna happen is on the flip side, it's going to show you um, no links. So, and I haven't done any anything here ahead of time to see what's what this is going to kind of look like here. But essentially, this is talking about um, not all clicks may lead to a conversion, tough like that. Um, does Facebook do a competitor replacement class? Like, this is kind of cool here. Like, if I wanted to reach out to this person here, I could be like, and I'm not going to do this, but I could be like, hey, Sarah, have you seen my super cool Facebook video that I posted about competitor research? Make sure you smash that like button. I could do something like that, but I don't want to come off super spammy, obviously. Um, but that's just the power of it, right? Imagine if you're a brand and somebody's talking about your product. You can put that information in there. You can manage that pretty actively. Um, on the flip side, you could also put in the service or product that you offer. So if you're a... Um, HVAC company, you can write down, you can write down like air conditioner plus break or air conditioner d down or, you know, you know what I mean? You guys would have more information about your niche than I will. Um, but you can put in all these different combinations and find people in your market or in your brand, in your um, space that make a ton of sense and make this super, super cool. Um, so what I would highly recommend, and I'll include a link here in the description, but there's, there's, this is one of many blogs. There's also, um, if you go back to the preferences section in Hootsuite, and if you go to show examples, it's gonna give you a ton of different ways of how you can go over search operators. And what search operators are, for those of you who do not know, is, so these are like the quotation marks um, or the capital or here or the minus and filter links. It's just a way for you to like go through all of your results and essentially filter it down to the exact query that you wanna see. So this, I think Life, Life Hacker is a pretty good um, blog out there with just some really quick examples. Also in that previous <clears throat> in that previous area, it had some good examples there. But essentially, you know, if you have quotation mark, it's going to make sure it's in sequential order. You can do the or thing that I had. You can do minus for this hashtags to see specific hashtags. If you do from, you can see it this being sent from specific people. So if you're following a very specific brand, you can go there and type in that information. Same thing for two, the amper, the uh, at sign. 
another really cool one for people who may be in the service industry or are selling products in a very specific area, you can put in operators for like near and then like a major city near you. So you could type in like Milwaukee, I'm, I'm near Milwaukee. You could do San Francisco. You could also do a within search operator and say within 45 miles of San Francisco. Um, I've tried this in the past and with some hit and miss results, it's going to be pretty sporadic. It kind of depends on if the people who are tweeting have um, their geolocation sent out with their tweets and not everybody has that. So take that one with a grain of salt, but that's also a very cool one. Um, you could also search for specific dates if you're looking for something that may be relevant from a time period. Um, same thing with dates here. You can also put in smiley faces, frowny faces, or question marks. And what that'll do is the operator will automatically look for um, tweets with a positive connotation, a negative connotation, or questions. So one that I've um, kind of messed around a little bit with in the past. So with this quality score one here is if I go to um, quality score, I can edit this query here and I can add in question mark. And what that's going to do is it's going to comb through all of these for where somebody is asking a question. So someone is like, or, or, or where Twitter thinks you may be asking a question, right? So um, are you using them? So this is more of like a click baity type of thing, right? So people are like, hey, I have a question. So if you want to go out there and find people who are asking very specific questions, you can go there and kind of um, insert yourself as like a thought leader in the space or offer your feedback and, or expertise in, in that area. So that's also another very, very cool and powerful thing. Um, one that I just learned about recently and when I started using a ton, I was doing this manually in the past, but you can filter for links or exclude links. I showed that a little bit earlier in this video. And then finally, you can look for um, stuff that was entered out in like the Twitter feed, for example. So you could do source Twitter feed. Um, this would kind of exclude like retweets. It would exclude um, other things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, let me know what else you guys kind of use this for. I'm, I'm hoping this is helping to kind of connect some dots for people and how they can use it for their specific niche. The way that I'm using it is exactly how I was discussing. Um, I, I, I'm very active inside these two hashtags here. I'm looking for different, um, I don't want to say buzzwords. That's such a, such a crappy, crappy word, but buzzwords <laughs> in, in, um, digital marketing to try to, um, just just learn more from other people in the space. So I think that's also really cool. I have very specific blogs or tools that I follow. And then again, people who work um, at Rocket Clicks, the company that I work for. So all right, well, that's about it on social listening, guys. So if you guys have any questions about social listening or how you may have used it um, in your current situation or how you've done it in the past, definitely let me know below in the comments um, or let me know on Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm kind of all around. So I appreciate you guys watching and uh, see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.